So you know it can happen tomorrow. It can happen next month. It can happen 50 years from now. But most experts agree there's a very good chance the next big earthquake here in the Pacific Northwest will happen in our lifetime. So that's why Coin6 is dedicating all week to make sure you know exactly what to expect and how to prepare for the next big one. Our Eileen Park kicks off our special coverage tonight. You might have heard of the Cascadia subduction zone. It starts in Northern California, goes past Oregon and all the way up to Canada for about 700 miles. And right now, it's like a ticking time bomb, ready to unleash one of the most devastating earthquakes we've ever seen. It's early in the evening in Newport. It's quiet, peaceful. Families enjoying the last minutes of daylight. Birds looking for their next meal. It's also going to look nothing like this when the big one hits. So this is the Core Lab freezer. Dr. Chris Goldfinger, a professor of geology and geophysics at Oregon State University, has been warning us about the Cascadia subduction zone for years. But it wasn't until this New Yorker article struck a nerve. This morning, the most popular article on the New Yorker's website is rattling many Americans. The message setting off a nationwide panic. Journalist Catherine Schultz reported of an earthquake that will spell the worst natural disaster in the history of the continent. This is the mother of all earthquake faults. Well, I'm not trying to scare anybody, but the, the New Yorker article was... Um, it was accurate. Right now, seismologists say the Juan de Fuca plate is slipping steadily beneath North America, while the North American plate is wedged against the surface, just waiting to snap. When it finally lets go, when the leading edge of North America reaches the breaking point and lets go, it's going to snap forward and up, and that's what generates the tsunami. And the coastline where my knuckles are is going to go down. Dr. Goldfinger says in the first minute the ground will start to shake, but it won't shake very hard. That's the first and only warning those on the coast will have before the real shaking begins. They really literally got just 15 minutes to get, get to high ground. They'll need to get to high ground because a tsunami will tear up most of the coast along the subduction zone. The magnitude 9 earthquake we're going to see is expected to last two to four minutes, but the damage will be extensive. Catastrophic. Uh, yes, it's definitely catastrophic. Uh. The closest earthquake we have to compare to is the 2011 Tohoku earthquake in Japan. Cars, homes, Businesses, especially on the coast, were completely destroyed. Nearly 19,000 people dead or missing, 300,000 displaced. Japan, a country well-equipped for earthquakes, struggled to rebuild communities for years. That's why experts say in Oregon, the damage will be even worse because our infrastructure is much weaker. We've built our whole society on, on top of an active tectonic area and, and didn't know it. Virtually none of our infrastructure has been built with earthquakes in mind. Structurally, the coast will sustain the heaviest damage. But for those living further inland, that still means most of our bridges, highways, commercial buildings, and homes will suffer tremendous structural damage. People will have to find a way to survive for weeks without power, without water, and without telecommunications. So Oregon is not prepared at all should an earthquake happen. Yeah, that's a, that's a fair statement. Because the Cascadia subduction zone is lined along our coast, Dr. Goldfinger says we will most likely not see a big crack in the ground, but we will see landslides all over the region. That's why many roads will be impassable. The coast will be cut off, the coastal bridges will be down, so traveling north and south along the coast uh, won't be possible for a while. I-5 will probably be closed for some time. A lot of the damage we're going to see will be in areas prone to liquefaction, such as areas along riverbanks, the shores, 
and also in the valleys. Here's a demonstration. Most man-made or natural soil and sand will slide, taking whatever's resting on them with it. Which is concerning, considering we have large petroleum tanks lining parts of the Columbia River. Now, we don't share this to create 